Yeah. I, I seem to have the perception that reason is not enough. Okay, you, let's say you have a few individuals where reason has basically gained a priority in their lives. Is there a threshold or a point after which they begin to impact society and we actually have a, 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 a push against a government, for example? Is there some kind of threshold, some sociological, socially based threshold after which you have so many peace people who are reasonable that actually begins to impact politics? Sure, I, I think there is. Uh, but I think it's, it's, not, it's not a numbers game. It's who these people are. So what changes the world uh, is the minority, and it's usually the intellectual minority. So it's, it's the intellectuals advocating for reason. It's the intellectuals advocating for freedom. Um, so it's when you see the intellectual world dominated by people who believe in, in freedom, who believe in individualism, that's when you'll start seeing political change. It doesn't have to be the majority of people because sadly, majority of people are followers. But who do they follow? Whether we like it or not, they follow in a sense the, the writers of the New York Times. Right? or the professors at the universities, or the people who show up on television, right? the, the intellectuals who show up on television. The intellectuals lead a culture. They drive a culture. It, the left took over America's institutions through the universities, through the, the intellectual elites. They became the professors, but ultimately they became the lawyers and the judges, and then ultimately the politicians. But it all starts at the universities. And then, of course, once you have the universities, all the other people who uh, go into journalism were trained in the universities, and all the people who go into all the intellectual professions are trained in the universities. And as long as you don't have a mechanism to train in the, uh, intellectuals, and as long as you don't dominate the intellectuals, you can't have real you know, uh, uh, progress. You can't really move a culture. Whether we like it or not, intellectuals determine a culture. And the intellectuals overwhelmingly are left, and therefore even the right in America is left. I mean, Donald Trump is a Democrat. He's not a Republican, not a traditional Republican. Everything on his agenda is, I mean, tariffs are Bernie Sanders' thing. Anti-immigration was always the left. The Democrats were anti-immigration. Why? Because they didn't want cheap labor competing with unions. So, you know, that's a left. Now, it's also combined with a nativist type xenophobic nationalism, which is on the right. But it's a combination, right? But you think about policy after policy, he is, and, and it's no accident that he, he usually voted Democratic, right? He was a Democrat. He was a registered Democrat until a few years ago. So most of the policies of the Republican Party, when they actually are in power, are left. That's because the whole intellectual world is left of center. There's very few intellectuals on the right. I mean, there's some conservatives and some neocons and some paleocons, and, but they are relatively weak in comparison. What is it? 90-something percent of, in certain fields in the humanities are, are, are leftists. And not just slightly left of center. We're talking about way out there left. Right? And it's hard to make progress in a world where the intellectual space is so dominant by one political or, or more deeply, one philosophical view of the world. And the right has been impotent when it comes to dealing with that. And the whole political map has shifted left constantly, both on social issues, which often has been a good thing, not a bad thing, and on economic issues. The whole thing has shifted leftwards because the intellectuals control it. So to me, reason is the key. but. And it needs to, you know, so we need to overcome the, the postmodernists and all the variety of, of different uh, anti-reason ideologies that exist on, on, at universities and campuses. Define reason properly, because I think there are a lot of people who claim they're for reason, but are not really for reason. They're not really for evidence, facts, logic, you know, reality. And, and when that becomes this idea of the importance and significance of reason as the, um, the way in which we know about the world, and coupled, when you couple that with individualism, when that is the dominant intellectual, that's what dominates the intellectuals in terms of the ideas, 
then it's just a matter of time and the world will change. But it's going to take a long time. We're way behind. We're way behind. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes.